Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. So today I'll be focusing on office reads because due to the recent work from home events because of COVID, office investors task, they actually provide rare opportunities at giving a very higher dividend yield compared to logistics or REITs are of course at a higher risk that's why their dividend yields are higher so in this video I would like to focus on overseas office REITs that are giving very attractive yields of 8 to 12 percent dividend yield however please take the dividend yield as a pinch of salt because their yields might drop because of interest rate or foreign currency exchange in the upcoming quarters. So, however, because of these high yields, this impact task would more or less cancel out, making it quite a good value to buy, in my opinion. So, I'll be focusing on Kepler Pacific US REIT and iREIT Global. And lastly, I'll share a REIT that is also a US REIT but because of recent announcement makes it way too risky to invest in and I'm sure if you follow the SGX announcement website closely you would know which REIT is it about so let us dive right in into Kepler Pacific Oak recent results so a brief introduction for those who are new to Kepler Pacific Oak they are a pure office US REIT with Majority of the income coming from Washington of 40 to 50 percent. So therefore, buildings in this area are actually very important to ensure that their occupancy are at a very healthy level. So looking at their balance sheet, if we see the gross margin or the gross revenue, it has increased by 3.2 percent if you compare annually and for the nine months as well. Moreover, the most important thing that I would like to focus on is the income available for distribution and the adjusted income available for distribution. If you see from the previous quarter, from 14.9%, it actually dropped by about 0.3 million. So this is not a good thing because this might actually symbolize that the upcoming half of the dividend might be lower. Moreover, their management has elected to receive the cash or the management fee in full cash instead of units which can be a good thing because it helps to show that in a way that they are diluting less units right rather taking in cash which can be a good thing for the read in the long run especially for shareholders so because of this why would the adjustable distributable income increase because of additional assets and they actually mentioned that they have a leverage of decent leverage level of 37.5% and no refinancing requirement until Q4 of 2024. So this is very important for especially for US REITs because as you know, interest rate in both Singapore and US are very high. So because of this, having no refinancing until Q4 is actually a good thing if you believe that by 2024 the interest rate would be lower because of lowering inflation so this has to be taken into account so looking into their debts they have no loans to refinance for 2022 and 2023 and they only have to refinance their 13 percent loan at q4 2024 so this is a very good thing because this means that they only have to refinance at a very later stage and their average cost of debt would be around estimated to be 3.1% with a decent coverage ratio of 4.4% which 4.4 times which is a safety value for certain risks. Because of this at the current share price of 0.46 and we can give it a worst case scenario that the dividend actually drops to about 14 cents 14 cents USD so with this this will analyze the dividend to be around $75 per lot of per lot SGD so with this $75 you can actually see that the U might be around 
around 8.6%. So by doing investment, it's always in important to take into account safety or be more prudent when you come to invest. So having a 8.6% is still quite decent even when you account for the drop in dividend yield. Of course, the markets are always having a lot of concerns. So therefore, you have to do your own homework to make sure that the company is still doing well. And you can see from this portfolio, the green ones are the ones that are actually have improvements in the occupancy, whereas for the yellow ones are the ones that are having a drop in occupancy. For Atlanta, Georgia, it's being, it will be sold soon and will increase the average occupancy to 93.2%. So, if we look at the different portfolios, better buildings are improving such as Washington, Colorado, West Tech, 125, Ballero Park. However, there are also some occupancy they are dropping, which is the West Park portfolio, the California buildings, Texas, and Florida. So because of this, it's quite balanced in a way that it's not a big concern in a drop in demand. So for tenant concentration rise, it's quite evenly distributed with no major tenants more than 5%, as you can see from this, with the top 10 only consists of 23.3% of the income. So another thing to take note is the rental growth in the different districts. However, one thing to focus on is their Washington asset which consists of about 40 to 50 percent of their income. And you can see that they are actually performing better than the forecasted. And there is some others that are actually forecasted lower but actually came on higher which is good. The only concern is the Houston rental income that came in at negative 0.8 percent. However, the rest are actually doing better than expected. So with the current dividend yield potential and the decrease in the US dollar, it actually gives Capital Pacific Oak a more attractive price to buy at. However, this is only my opinion and I hope that you would do extra homework in order to make sure that you make the right investment choice. A brief introduction into IRA Global. So as you can see, they are actually a mixture of retail and office suite of assets of 1 billion euros with France, Spain and Germany being the focus but with Germany being the majority of the assets. So at 1 billion euros it's actually considered quite decent size with 37 freehold properties. So that's the advantage of having euros or overseas properties as compared to Singapore properties. Ivory Global is an, actually a very interesting read because based on what, what I've read, in my opinion, they are actually doing very well in adapting to inflation and the interest rate as well. So as you can see from the performance, their occupancy are at a healthy level of 96.5% with a very good leverage ratio of 30.6% as well. Moreover, their rental escalation is the highlight with 4.2% year over year growth with step up rents and CPI indexation. This actually means that they are actually offsetting the inflation by ensuring that their rental are tied to inflation data when charged to customers. So this will also benefit shareholders while being resistant to inflation. Moreover, their high occupancy rate was due to the involvement of the government body of leasing their office. So having a government body leasing office is definitely a good thing because governments are a very good tenants to have. Of course being a smaller rate comes with a more focused tenants. As you can see key tenants here yeah, as compared to the other normal rates they have actually a lot of key tenants that are actually providing a large amount of their income which is a very risky thing. As you can see, there is GMG at 27.5%. The good thing is that they actually break about how they reduce the dependence 
from 45.8% back in 2019 to 27.5%. Whereas for others, at, are at 21.6%, 14.5%, and so on. Whereas for other small tenants are only at 29.2%. So this is one of the key tenant focus risks that investors have to take note of. Of course, one of the most favorite things that I'd like to read from this read is that they have a very free debt that would not have to be refinanced until 2026 at 281.3 million, which is essentially the whole amount that they have for their borrowings. And this is very smart because this actually allowed their currency or their interest rate to be hedged at what memory a cheap value of 1.8% thus giving a very decent coverage ratio of 8.0x times. With this much of the interest rate hedge and well, well lasted till 2026, this makes iRig Global the one of the most, if not the most, well resistant to the inflation or the interest rate hikes. So therefore, both REITs of Capital Pacific O and IRA Global are definitely both attractive or are priced at a current attractive yield of about 7.7% for IRA Global whereas for Capital Pacific US REIT if you look at the historical dividend yield is estimated to be about 12 to 13%. However, you have to take into account of the currency risk as Capital Pacific O is US REIT while I read global is based on euro dollars so as long as the currency drops and when it converts to SGD will be lower in terms of dividend so in times of recession office rates tends to be hit the most especially their asset values because demands for office would definitely drop compared to logistic and industrial sites so because of this their leverage ratios for the REITs are required to be at a healthy range such that in the event if their asset value drops their leverage ratio would not hit the regulatory limit of 50%. One of the prime example is Manu Life, when their previous result earnings was 42% leverage ratio. So currently, they have recently announced that because of the asset drop of 10.9% in their values, their leverage ratio actually hit 49%, and that's only a 1% gap from the 50% limit. And their interest coverage ratio is at 3.1 times. So this is very risky and would actually force Manu Life to actually come up with ways to finance the debt or reduce their leverage ratio. So from what I see, one of the ways is to either sell the asset or take or distribute more units in order to get money from the shareholders. Thank you for reaching this part of the video so if you like this video please like subscribe and comment if you think that you have the same opinion about all this US office read and with their attractive view is it a good price to enter or do we have to look or suffer more down, downward valuation before we actually step in to buy it thank you so much and you can also view my other analysis if you enjoyed this analysis on the other reads as well so let's look forward to the next earnings that is coming up soon thank you and to the next video